The topic I want to talk today is about growing instead of getting. Somebody say growing. growing. Come on, sex sexually. Somebody say growing, growing instead of getting. And uh, if you have your Bibles, we're going to read uh, just a little bit from Matthew 25 verses 14 through 18 and 24 through 30. Just, it's a very famous scripture, but I just want to be able to uh, read that real fast for you guys before we go into further. And it should be on our screen behind. And it says this, again, it will be like a man going on a journey who called his servants and trusted his wealth to them. To one, he gave five bags of gold. Somebody say, I receive. Come on. To another two bags and to another one bag, each according to his abilities. Somebody underwrite that. Each according to his ability. Then he went unto his journey. The man who had received five bags of gold went once and put his money to work and gained five more bags. So also the one with two bags gained two more. But man who had received one bag went off, dug a hole in the ground. Terrible idea. Dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. Then we go to verse 24. Then the man who had received one bag of gold came and said, Master, he said, I knew that you were a hard man. Underline this, I knew. It deals with mindset. I knew that you were a hard man, harvesting where you did not sown and gathering where you have not scattered seeds. So I was afraid. Underline that. I was afraid and went out and hid your gold in the ground. See, here is what belongs to you. His master replied, you said, you wicked and lazy servant. You knew that I harvest where I did not sow and gather where I have not scattered seed. Well, then you should have put, at least you have put my money in deposit with the bankers so that when I return, I would have received it back with interest. Verse 28 says, so take this bag of gold from him and give it to the one who has 10 bags. For whoever has to him more will be given and he will have abundance. Whoever does not have even what they have will be taken from them and throw this worthless servant outside into a darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth a little sour at the end but Jesus is trying to point out certain things from this parable and, and before we go into the message just want to underline this fact as we are touching on the area of finances and wealth is that money is not a sign of righteousness neither is poverty a sign of sin or a curse in your life we have to understand that part some people feel like if i have money god loves me no it's not some people feel like well if i don't have money you know god has punished me that's not the goal that's not the point also it's not that if you do get blessed financially some people say well i might have pride and and all this I, or if i lose all the money god is trying to keep me humble that's not it. The Bible clearly says that the money is neutral, that it's that in 1 Timothy 6 10, that it's the love of money is the root of all evil. It's never the, the subject in itself that is evil, it's our hearts towards that area that makes it good or evil. It could be a blessing in your hands, or the love of it can become a curse in your hands. So I just want to get that out of the way. So we're not thinking like, oh, we're preaching the prosperity gospel again. No, God wants us to be blessed. We reflect the character of our Father. Amen. So as we reflect a Heavenly Father who says gold and silver is mine, that this is what God wants us to have. And through this parable, we're just going to touch on a few principles that God has. A few things I want to take out is that God entrusts each, poor, each person according to their ability. So each one of us will have certain things in our life according to what we can handle. Somebody has more than us doesn't mean they're better than us. Somebody has a little bit that doesn't mean they're more worse than us. It's God entrusts each person to the, our own abilities that we have. So don't be begin to judge, oh, well, God didn't give me this much as that. He must not love me as much. No, he gives us to what we can handle and what we can do. With my oldest son, I don't give him, say, hey, go change an oil in my car. It's just, he can't handle that. I'm more like, hey, go take your bike and put it in the shed. I know that's something that he can handle. It's not that I don't love, love him more if I give him a bigger task. No, I just know what he can handle. And what he cannot handle if God begins to entrust you with things that you can't handle you'll begin to be frustrated you will begin to fail and you'll ask God God why are you punishing me instead of God why are you loving me 
So the things that God gives us, the riches, the skills, the family, the marriage, the church, our home groups, it's a matter of us being able to handle it and our abilities. Amen. Second thing I want to point out is, uh, the, sorry, and the first one is Luke 12, 48 talks about to whom much is given, much will be required. To whom much is committed, much will be requested. Amen. So the more you're given, the more you're going to be required from you. The second thing from this parable I want to point out is that God expects each one to be fruitful and to multiply. So when God gives you certain things in your life, it could be a job, it could be in your marriage, it could be with your kids, God expects out of each one of us to begin to be fruitful and to begin to multiply. And Colossians 1.10 says that, that you may walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing Him, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. In Genesis, when we read from in the beginning of Genesis, the Bible clearly says over and over and over, be fruitful and multiply. Somebody say be fruitful. Somebody say and multiply. So God expects out of each one of us. That when he entrusts you with certain gifts, certain talents, certain areas in your life, God expects you to be fruitful. When people look at you, they know there's something different about you. You're not just a regular person. You're doing something. There's the blessing of God that begins to follow you. Why? Because it's the commandment that God has given us to be fruitful and multiply. And the last thing I want to underline is that our ability to multiply depends on our mindset. Our ability to multiply and to be fruitful what we have in our life depends on our mindset. In this parable, the, the, the servant that was given one bag of gold, he said, I knew that you're wicked. I was afraid. It deals with mindset. It deals with, with like, hey, you know, I don't want to do anything. That's, just, that's just, just me. I have this mindset of the God, you're wicked. God, you're out there to punish me. God, you know, the moment I make a wrong mistake, you're going to just smite me. You're going to send me to hell. The view of God is from a, like a pessimist, like saying that God, you know, you just want to punish me. You always want to keep fun away from me. You don't want to bless me. You want to always just, you know, just so I have enough, just so I can survive, so you can teach me humbleness or so you can punish me this or that. The view of his master, the view of our God, if it's, it's a negative view, you won't be able to produce. You won't be able to be fruitful. The Bible says all good and perfect gifts come from the heaven above. So when we have the view of God, we are able to do good. Amen. When I give a task to my child to do this or that, and if he doesn't love, if he sees me, oh, my dad's just trying to punish me. Do you think the task that he will do will be good or not? Of course not, because it's done out of fear. It's done out of like, well, if I make a little mistake, he's going to punish me. But if it's done out of love, we know that we can exceed who performs better, the one who gets scared to do a thing or the one that gets encouraged to do a thing? It's the one that gets encouraged. The one that says, I believe in you. You can do it. You're fearfully, wonderfully made. You're the head. You're not the tail. You're more than conquered. The spirit of Christ, Christ from the dead lives inside of you. Or the one that says that if you don't do it, I'm going to punish you. You know, you're always worthless. You always can't amount to nothing. It's the one that gets encouraged. So our mindset of God reflects on our ability to be fruitful and to multiply. Amen? The first point I want you to, to write down is that focus more on being than doing. If you guys have your notes, your phones, write them out, take them out, write this down. I believe this is going to change some of you guys' life or impact them. Focus more on being than doing. Somebody say being, being. than doing. Come on, second century, say being, being. than doing. In Daniel 11, 32, it says, The people that do know their God shall be strong and do exploits. Becoming is greater than doing. We have to understand. In this verse that we just read, it first starts with knowledge. Then it comes to transformation in your life. Then it goes into action. The people that do know their God, there, there has to be a knowledge more important than doing. Many people are concerned more about, let me just do, 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 do this, do this, do this, but they don't have the knowledge of how to do it right. 
Some people are getting in and starting businesses left to right, left to right, and failing at all of them. Why? It's because it's the same mindset that is doing the work. We begin to say, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just open up a home group. I'm just going to do, do, do. I'm going to go out and I'm going to get this degree or do this, this, this. And they're more focused on let me do the action instead of increasing the knowledge of how to do it right. Instead of the increasing my ability to know what, who I am in God, who God says that I am, what I can do and what I have in my life. When we increase our ability to know who we are, then we are able to perform better instead of just doing the work. Amen? Amen. So we have to concentrate more. Being is more greater than doing. Every time that you are faced with failure, every time you're faced with a challenge in your life, you have to understand that it's not the thing that you are doing that is failing. It is your mindset that is limited to be able to get that thing to success it was never the action that you were doing it is simply that you exhausted your mental capacity for the realm that you are currently in why because the same thing that you are doing right now somebody somewhere else is doing it and succeeding at it i've, I've seen it many times Two people doing the same thing. One succeeds and one doesn't. And, and one can say, oh, it's the market, it's this, this, this. Oh, it's, it's the environment. Oh, it's how I've been treated. But if you really dig deep into that, it is the mindset that separates the two apart. That makes one to be successful and other to be failing at it. Why? Because in this parable that we wrote, that, that we read, every single person received gold. It wasn't one that received silver. Every single person received gold, yet one made successful, was fruitful with it. The other was lazy and wicked with it. What separated the two? It was never the environment. It was their mindset. One focus on being instead of doing and then was able to become fruitful and to bring back the reward back to his master. I want to challenge somebody here today that it's never the action that you're doing it's more of the knowledge you acquire and the and knowing who you are in Christ Jesus what God says that you can do in your life the wisdom that comes from God more than the action itself we have to understand some, some people are like well you know only if I if I can just do this thing wealth was never it was never meant to follow desire or the action it was always meant to follow growth it was always meant to follow you increasing your value, you increasing your knowledge about that subject, about that thing, about that skill, and God's blessing will begin to come into your life. You know what they say, if you give a poor person more money, he'll still be poor. If you give a poor person a book or a lesson, he'll still ask for money. If you take the money from the wealthy, sooner or later they'll still come back to it. I read the statistics that said that if you take the, the whole uh, the money that's in this world and you distribute it equally, give it about a year and the money will flow back into where it was prior to that distribution. Why? Because it was never the money itself, but it was the knowledge and the mindset that was able to keep that. You look at two different marriages. You see one marriage that is, that is fighting and, 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 and they just can't stand each other. And you see another marriage. Same, same situation. Same marriage. It's not the person's different. It's not that the action is different. It's that the mindset that was going into that marriage. So I'd be like, oh, you don't know this person. She's the devil. I heard this quote. It said, the devil you know is better than the devil you don't know. You know, so you think yours is bad until you try something else. It's really bad. So just because you think that the thing that you're doing is really bad or it's so hard, why is it that the same thing that you're doing now here, somebody else is, is succeeding in it somewhere else? Why? It's the mindset that retrieves and, and we acquire in order to do that thing in our life. Our body, our life is, is a slave to our mindset. When somebody gets in a car crash, hits a pole, you don't blame the car for that accident. You blame the driver, right? Our mind is that driver. The things that we have in our life, the things that are surrounding us, if they are failing, don't blame the, the circumstances that is failing. 
You have to look deeper, which it is. The Bible clearly says that as the man thinks in his heart, so is he. God begins to portray your heart, your mind to a thing that, look, you have to take care of deeper things. Before I could be a blessing in multiplication, it says be fruitful. That means that it comes out of the inner being. Is that being fruitful, then multiply. You say, well, you know, it's kind of like, you know, whatever out there. It's just God expects each one of us to be that. When he entrusts us with the marriage, God wants you to be fruitful and multiply. And not just that you're living together. No, that your marriage can impact other marriages. It could be a, a voice of hope for those who are given up. That your family could be a voice, that you raise next generation leaders and world changers. And not just that you have a family, raise them, that they don't get into drugs. No, that there will be an impact in our society. They'll make difference in the history in this world. You're not just a, a mother raising children. No, you're a mother raising a prophet. You're a mother raising the next uh, president. You're a mother raising a doctor who's going to find a cure for this or that. You're not just a person that's just trying to do life. No, you're called to be fruitful and to multiply in every area of your life. I remember um, when we first were starting with the church and we had just only like two pews of people coming here. And, and I remember Pastor Vlad's like, God is challenging me to be a pastor of a hundred and a thousand people. And we we're like, okay, cool. What does that mean? So we would literally, the, the simplest thing that we did was take the, the pulpit that was standing here in the middle, uh, here on this side, and just move it to this middle and then move it up on the stage so to act like we're preaching to the whole sanctuary where I was only two people over here. God will never change your circumstances. He will always change you. Then the circumstance will begin to follow because you grew on the inside. The funny part, yeah, let's give God a praise for that. The funny part was the moment we literally moved the pew from here to there to here, like what's the pew has to do with anything? started preaching as if we had the whole sanctuary people started coming it's like what's going on but God even in Genesis he says first let there be light and then light comes he first begins to speak it out of his existence and then it begins to happen in our lives don't blame your marriage for you know oh if you only knew what he did to me or if you only knew how she is this is this. no change your mindset Begin to declare who you are in Christ Jesus. Begin to act like you have a blessed marriage. Begin to act like you have kids that obey you. Begin to walk according to and you will see how sooner or later your circumstances will begin to align according to it. Amen church? When you're facing failure in your life it means that you have exhausted the mental capacity for that round. You just exhausted your mental compass. Every time I face failure in whatever area that I am, I always come back to this and I, I always say, what is it that I still don't know? Because the thing that I'm doing now, somebody else is doing and he's succeeding at it. What is it that I don't know yet? What is, what is the area where God wants me to grow still into? There's many times that we ask God for a blessing and God says, you're not ready. The blessing that comes with this thing, there's a responsibility, there's a maturity, and there's a mindset that needs to handle that blessing. I don't give my, my five-year-old keys to the car. Why? Because there's maturity and there's education, there's a knowledge that comes to receive that blessing. So many times when we pray and we say, God, why are you not blessing? Well, ask yourself, why is God not blessing you? What is this next level in your life that you need in order to maintain that blessing? Because you have to understand, higher places are slippery places. You can't make mistakes at a higher place than you are making now. There's certain requirements, certain, certain mindset that God needs you to have in order for you to handle and maintain and to keep. It's better for you not to receive that blessing than to receive and lose it. How many of you guys agree with that? It's better for you not to know, oh, I got a brand new car. And then two months later, the tow truck is taking it. It's better for you not to. Have. Why? Because God says, I want to give you that blessing. But I don't want you to lose it. Because it, in uh, what the scripture says that the God makes, God's blessing makes one rich and adds no sorrow to it. He doesn't want to give you 
a blessing that later on you're pulling out your hair because you don't know how to maintain it. I remember back in the day, I was praying, God bless me with the business. Then I got the business, God, I was asking God to take it away. <laughs> you have 35 employees, most of them 30 like grown men acting on like, like little kids and you're becoming a counselor now instead of a boss because you're trying to manage people's problems and he took this tool, he looked at me that way and, and you're sitting there and you're ripping out your hair because you don't know how to handle this. You ask God for a blessing, but that blessing came with responsibilities that you weren't prepared to take. Be careful because if you're not careful enough, that blessing can turn into curse. When you don't know how to pay your bills next month, that's not a blessing. Because you can't lose, you can't sleep. You're losing sleep over how am I going to handle this? The next level in your life where God wants us to, to take you to, God says, I want you to focus more on being than on doing that doing will come it will it will be it's most like it's like as you increase your your worth on the inside know who you are the knowledge that you need to have to require for the next area of your life those things will begin to come to you you know we prayed for more people to come to our church we ask God we want to overflow but that overflow comes with problems like no parking lots people complain of packed places you know people are like saying no, it's too hot in here you know we can't park anywhere. we have to park all over there it comes with problems there's more drama there's more people leaving the church there's people saying this is this if you're not careful this blessing can can no longer look like a blessing somebody say uh somebody say focus more on being than doing Life will always take you back to the real place where your mindset is. Always. Life has a way of, in a way, dragging you either forward or backwards where your mindset is. You know, they did a study that most of the people that win the lottery in three to four years actually become more broke than they were before the lottery. And actually most of them commit suicide and die. Because life has a way of, of dragging you back or forward where your mind is and and Jesus says be, like pay attention to your heart out of the heart flow the issues of life and, and we want to say God give me give me this God give me that God's like no I I, I want to first increase your worth and I want you to become more stable to you that you, you're grounded in God that if good times come you're not moved if bad times come you're not moved that you're walking with God knowing that that job is just a resource that I am your source that God is the fountain of everything that's in my life if you make him your all you know that good times come you're anchored bad times come you're still anchored why because you are known who you are in Christ Jesus what you can do and what you have in your life in Jesus name amen, amen. transformation takes time it's not a one thing that hey tomorrow I'm gonna take a book I'm gonna raise, memorize three scriptures and that's it all is good and, and I'm gonna go and conquer the whole world it takes time somebody say transformation, transformation. takes time we, we took years to build the mindset that we have. We can't expect one book to change our mindset. I remember some guys like, oh, I'll listen to this podcast. I'm going to go start a business. I'm like, please don't. <laughs> Just please don't. I'm like, I don't want to. I'm tired of helping people with money and stuff because you're broke. So it was like, it's, it's first educate yourself on it. Build your mind to acquire the skills that needed in order to maintain the blessing that God has for your life. Number two is this. God will always bless you through opportunities. If you ask God for money, he'll never give you money. Just understand that part. God will always present an opportunity for you to exercise the God-given desires and the gifts that he's placed inside of you in order for the blessings to come in your life. Always in a, with God. God gave every person in, in the Bible this through opportunities a throne or or that area where blessing begins to come. If you look at Joseph's life, for example, you know God showed him a dream that he's going to be one day to rule and God's gonna, uh, people are going to bow down to him. But before that came, God gave him an opportunity to be a slave, and he exceeded in being a slave. God put him in a Potiphar's house, and then he exceeded. He became the best of Potiphar's house. He lost that position. He went to jail. Then became the head in the jail. Come on, it's like that's that's tough, right? You're, you're, you're in jail and to become the top and like, I don't know what you do, but you must be good at that. Every area Joseph was tossed into, he saw his opportunity. I'm going to come the best at it. People are going to see Christ through what I do in my life. 
And sooner or later, life dragged him out of that place and put him in the throne where his mindset was originally. When he was in that, in that dungeon, dungeon, when he was in the part of his house, he said that, look, I know where I belong. It is not here. It's not here. You might have in right now uh, uh, things, uh, fights in your marriage, but let your mind not be to say, you know, we are happily married. God is in the midst of marriage. We love each other as Christ loved the church, you know, and, and you're sitting there and sooner or later you'll get to that place. Why? Because you did not allow the circumstances to affect the God-given word that was in your heart. God expects each and one of us to become to a place where we reflect Christ. When people looked at Joseph, they said, God is with this guy. When people see you, they got to say, man, this, this guy, is, there's something different about him. He's not just, you know, walking around praying in tongues. No, he's exceeding in everything that he does. And sooner or later, you'll begin to rise to the place where God has called you to be. Amen. Oh, Proverbs 10, 22 was the thing. The blessings of the Lord makes one rich and adds no sorrows to it. There's a woman named... Um, Ursula Burns. Burns began her career as an intern and later a, a junior engineer at Xerox company. She worked her way over the years eventually to become the CEO of, of Xerox in 2009, making her the first African woman to lead a Fortune 500 company. Starting off as an intern, saw it as an opportunity, knew who she was, and sooner or later God begins to promote, promote, and she becomes a CEO of a company. Many times we see our job and we're like, God, this thing, I just need a higher paying job. God's like, I want to make you the head of the company in this job. It's not the dollar difference that's going to make an impact in your life. It's your mindset that's going to do the difference in where you are right now. If you are a mother, if you're a teacher, if you're, if you're whatever area that God has placed you in, it doesn't have to be that every single person here has to start a business. No, the area that you are in right now, God says, I need you to be fruitful and to begin to multiply. And as you begin to increase your worth, begin to increase your knowledge and the skills that God has in that area, it wasn't that Joseph begins to preach to, to the Potiphar's house that made him successful. No, he did what he did with excellence. How you are acting when it comes to your job, when it comes to your family. Are you going an extra mile or are you just doing enough just to make sure, hey, it's done? That makes a difference. If it's just like, oh, I just, you know, barely making it on time to, to work and, you know, clocking out early, trying to cheat on hours, you know, trying to do a, a half job. Not in, no, when you excel... When you begun and go do an extra mile, God will begin to reward the work of your hands. If your hands are lazy, there's nothing to reward. If, you're a war, if your hands are hard work and diligent, God begins to bless that. Because the Bible says whatever your hand touches will be blessed. If your hand touches your tummy all the time, it might get blessed too. So be careful with that. In uh, 2 Kings 4 verses 1 to 7. There was a prophet and, had, and there was a widow with oil. And the prophet came to, to her and, was a, uh, and the widow said, hey, this debtor is coming to collect two of my sons. I need, I need help. And prophet begins to tell her, says, go borrow vessels. Begin to increase your mind. Begin to grab as much vessels as possible because as much as you increase it, I will fill it. God always begins to stretch our mind to be able to see more. To be able to see more, you know, when we were starting the church, our pastor would tell us, hey guys, you got to say thousand locally, millions globally. We're like, who's going to listen to us? We still have a Russian accent. You know, nobody's going to, we see like oh, all these things, nobody's going to listen to us. No, but God was like, increase your mind. Stretch your faith. Stretch, see more. And as we begin to say it, as we begin to say it, people from countries we never even heard and don't even believe they exist, they say, you guys are impacting our lives. And they say, you guys' a slogan of millions globally, I'm one of them. But it all started as you begin to say thousands locally, 
millions globally. I'll be blessed as I walk in. I'll be blessed as I walk out. God is on my side and I will not be moved. You know, God is for me. What can be against me? I'm an overcomer. God's going to, you know, bless the work on my hands. God's going to make me an overcomer. You know, I'm going to have an influence in my generation. I'm not just going to be a teenager walking by. No, I'm going to make a difference in my school. I'm going to open an shame clubs. I'm going to, instead of kids taking their lives, they're going to be giving their life to Jesus Christ. And you just declaring those things over your life. Sooner or later, your circumstances circumstances aligned to your mindset that God has given you don't pray for a changed circumstance pray God change me God increase my capacity to believe God increase my capacity to to stand and not to give up and to know that sooner or later God will bring the reward to those who believe amen church and the last one is it is never the risk but knowledge somebody say it's never the risk but the knowledge in Hosea 4 6 it says that my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge it didn't say somebody else it says my people it's God's children they're destroyed for lack of knowledge God wants to increase your capacity to believe God wants to increase your faith to be able to believe and to stand with God and to strive for more to believe that there's more to come with him amen church you know um I was the first one to marry a Latina in my family and it was tough. <laughs> Can I give a testimony to somebody? No, just kidding. <laughs> so, you know, it's, it's one of those things that knowledge makes a huge difference, right? <laughs> Especially when it comes to these things. And, uh, you know, going on to eight years married, I'm alive. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. <laughs> uh, there's a few things that you figure out how to do, you know, she didn't come with the manual, so it was a little bit hard. It's like trial and error. You try, it doesn't work, you figure it out. One thing I know is like, you're eating your, your dinner, your lunch, just like, eh, but it's, it's a little spicy, you know? <laughs> you know where you lost it is when, when her accent changes, you know? It's like, do you think this is spicy? <laughs> do you don't know spicy? <laughs> like, what, what's, what's going on? Even, even my dog leaves the room at that point, just like, homie, you're on your own on that one. <laughs> So you learn a thing or two as time comes. Knowledge separates those that have success and those that have failure. It's the knowledge that separates. God wants us to understand it's that he will bless you, but he doesn't want that blessing to begin to break your life. Many pastors, they pray for a bigger church, but bigger church comes and they, they get on depressing pills. Why? Because that enlargement comes with pressure. Enlargement comes with false accusation, name calling, losing friends, backstabbing. We, we feel like, oh, as long, if I get more money, things will become easier. Actually, it gets harder. I was talking in my home group the other day, and I was like, have you ever been sued before? It's like, what? Like, yeah. You have more money, you're going to get sued. No. Oh, yeah. Have you ever been lied against? We don't think that those, those higher places our slippery place and God says before I take you to that area God was like Joseph look before I take you to that throne you got to learn how to be rejected by your own you got to be learned you got to learn and have to master of being falsely accused after you begin to be falsely accused you have to learn how to still help while you were cheated by those people you Joseph the place that you're going to, I need you to know that even if you help somebody, they'll forget about you and you still have to move on. That's an area of a throne. And God says, you can't have the throne unless you master these things. We ask God, God, take away this, this challenge from my life. God's like, no, it's an opportunity for you to get to your throne. It's not, it's not a curse. It's not a punishment. No, I'm trying to prepare you to maintain the blessing that comes with it. It just doesn't come without challenges. No great marriage succeeds without being able to say sorry when you're right. Yeah, that, that's thinking, huh? I, I learned it really. Your mouth shut, wallet open, it's always my fault. Hey, that's it. Figure it out. It's my fault. Dead, but that's it. Done. <laughs> Take the money, go. We're good. <laughs> it's, 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 it works. <laughs> but that's how strong marriages are built. Because we feel, oh, it's going to be so much fun. And they get into the first car argument. It's like, oh, I can't do this. And irreconcilable differences. 
So the place where, like I said, it's, you, I prayed for God. God, give me bigger home group. I want to impact more people. But there comes drama with it. There comes people that say things about you. There's times where people don't show up. There's times where it just gets hectic and all these things. Like, do I want to do this? And God says, you wanted a blessing. It is a blessing, but you just have to learn how to handle it. Just like every newborn baby. It's such a precious thing when you hold it at night. And it's, it's, oh, it's such a... But then it comes at four in the morning when the baby starts screaming, starts crying, and it can't go to sleep. There's life. There's, there's love, but yet there's a challenge. We've seen, many, we've seen it over and over. Unfortunately, many parents give up their kids. Why? Because they couldn't handle the pressure that came with having a blessing from God. Where God wants each and one of us to go is a higher place, but it's not an easier place. Living a blessed life, there's certain things that you have to cut away from your life. There has to be focus. You know, for every marriage to succeed, you have to get rid of your single friends. In order for you to have abundance when it comes to finances, there has to be cut away of unnecessary spendings. There's certain things that have to lose in your life, but some people are not willing to, to do those things. Why? Because they want to just live life as if, you know, as everything is, is good, everything is perfect. No, there, there's a price to pay where God wants you to go. I'm not trying to discourage anybody to get to that place. No, it's, it's a beautiful place. It's a blessing. I've been married eight or almost eight years now. It's the best thing that ever happened to me. Even, you know, it's, it's like as some people might, even though my jokes might portray that it's terrible. No, it's the best thing that ever happened to me. But it was a challenge. It taught me to certain things to, to hey, figure your stuff out in order if you want to enjoy this thing. You lay your pride down. Learn how to say sorry. Learn how to cut away certain things. Learn how to humble yourself and you'll enjoy that blessing. And as you make that sacrifice, you thank God for every day of your life. Say, God, thank you for being faithful in my life. Now, as we, are we praying right now for, you know, a new building that God has entrusted us and, and uh, God has given us? There's challenges with it. There has to be money that needs to be raised. There's infrastructure. There's certain things that come with it. But we know that God, where God wants us to go is a blessed life. That's why here we begin to teach on marriage, strong families, finances, on health, on a sound mind, on learning how to overcome, on dealing with strongholds, on being deliverance from demons, healings, blessings, all those things. Why? Because where we are going, where God wants you to be is a place that is not easy, but it's doable. Some practical steps before we finish this is that your first and foremost things that is your relationship with God. Above all, don't lose your relationship with God. The Bible says, Matthew 6, seek first the kingdom of God and, and his righteousness. Everything else will be added to you. Don't lose focus of God in the midst of it all. As things get hectic, spend more time with God in prayer. Second of all is your word-based teachings. You have to surround your life with word-based teaching, not just any type of books. It has to be word-based. Begin to listen to sermons. Begin to listen to podcasts that are centered on God's principle for your life. You have to have that in your life. Third one is that oh, there's, there's, some, there's some sermons. You, you can ask my wife. I've been literally 30 times. I'm just, just listen and listen. Why? Because I know... That this is not just information. It needs to become a revelation in my life. It has to become a, a part of my life. Sometimes you hear it once, but man, I just need to drill it. Drill it in my mind so much that it becomes automatic action. That when God says to do something, I don't think twice. Is it part of the Bible? This is No, God said it. I do it. Why? It's because it became part of me. It took you 20 years, 30 years, some 10 years to get that negative thinking in your life. Don't think just one time sermon will get it out. It's repetition in your mind. As you hear the word of God, as you meditate the word of God, as you speak the word of God, becomes part of your life. Then it changes your circumstance. People who are where you want to go. Surround yourself with people who will challenge you. This happens through home groups. I challenge every single person. Don't miss home groups. Yeah, it might seem like, oh, it's just, no, it's, it's where you grow. It's where you get challenged, where you, where, you, where you see others doing good. And it's like, okay, I need to step up doing good. Where God will use different people in their life to begin to uplift you, to encourage you, to push you where you need to go. You need to have that surround. Show me your friends and I'll show you your future. You have to have people in life that challenge you. Yes, they might not know everything about where you're going to go, but they can see the fundamentals in your life and God can use them 
to correct you, to uplift you, and to be able to send you to the place where you have to go. For example, you know, uh, our pastor with, uh, with Pastor Vlad, you know, our pastor never wrote a book. But yet, he trained up pastors that are able to achieve more than ever he was able to. And some of the things he doesn't even know how to do. Yet, the fundamental and core issues, God used our pastor to instruct, to correct, to uplift. And now this church where he, it is because of people like our pastor in our lives. So you have to put yourself, oh, he doesn't know anything about business. Oh, you yeah, know, if he's an anointed man of God, if he's an anointed woman of God, God uses them. Let God use them to speak into your life. Amen? Amen. And the last one is take action. Take action. Take small steps. Where, where you need to go, begin to, begin to say, hey, next week, you know, if our marriage is struggling, let's, let's go on a date. Let's try it. You know, the, the week after, let's, let's spend some time. Let's pray together. You know, the, the week after that, you know, if when a business say, hey, let's, let's cut off 1% of spending. Just small little things in your life that you can take action, but those things will begin to add up. And sooner or later, you'll see how they'll turn into a lifestyle. And that lifestyle will begin to bring the blessings of God. When they do come, you'll be able to maintain in Jesus' name. Hey, thanks for watching to this sermon. If this was a blessing to you, would you let me know in the comments below? What stood out to you from this message? What are you taking home with you from this message? Also, if you enjoy these messages, would you help us and hit thumbs up for this video and subscribe to our channel so you can get new videos every single week delivered to you on your YouTube app. If you go to hungrygen.com forward slash sermons, you'll actually be able to download the transcript, the notes, and the quotes of this sermon and the rest of all of our sermons free of charge. Until next time.